All right, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I got the rocker panel installed. We're going to look at that in a minute. So I'm going to take two hammers. I'm going to take my body hammer, and then if Minnie can give me that other hammer, Minnie the Body Shop Girl's back, and I want everybody to give Minnie the Body Shop Girl a big hand. She has joined the. You want to come over here, please? Sit down. Right there, so people can see you. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to sit on this. Okay, Minnie the Body Shop Girl has joined RICA. Which is RCIA. RCIA. Go ahead and tell everybody it's, uh, uh, what it the is. School for becoming Catholic. It's the school to become a Catholic. So she is going to convert over to Catholicism, and she really enjoys the class. And we don't need no haters out there telling us about the devil and religion is this, that, and the other. It's our preference. If many wants to do that, I'm proud of her. And hopefully. Catholic very soon. So. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. Can you give me my uh, cutting torch and the striker? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and attempt on Sunday. This is Sunday afternoon late. I've been working on this most of the day. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get all this mess straightened out right here. So um, it looks like I'm going to have to move the camera. Can you kind of move the camera over here, please? Camera girl mini. Let's get the camera over here where we can see what's going on because this is a really tight situation. I'm going to have to lower my seat all the way down on this one. Okay. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So if you look over here in the foreground or background, whatever you're looking at, you can see the rocker panel is temporarily installed. Um, we have got to close all these holes up. All these holes have got to be closed. So we're going to try to mimic our way through it, kind of like I was telling you. Does it going to look exactly perfect and like it should be? No, it's not. Uh, but there's nothing you can do on this type of deal unless you have a shop that has $3 million worth of tools in it. You know, rollers and benders and English wheels and... Well, something you know, else you got to take in mind, too. You can't see both sides of the car at the same time. Well, and, and one more. And the tire is going to be in front of it. Well, another thing is, this is the bottom of the car. Nobody's going to look underneath the bottom of the car and say, oh, my God. All right. No, we're not going to slop it together. But what we are going to do is get it to where it works. You want to stand over here? I'm going to have to land this to you. You're going to have to be the uh, cutting torch holder girl. So I'm going to go ahead and try to put this indention in it right here first because I noticed there was an indention and if you're looking at what I'm looking at you can see where the metal is getting red hot. So we're going to kind of manipulate our way in getting this metal where we need it. And if you're watching this as a DIY video, I'm not making it as a DIY video. I'm showing you that restoring cars is a big job and this is part of it. So. Um, this is not welded on here. All I'm doing is molding these pieces in place and I'm going to use my screw holes as my guide points to put all this back together once I trim it out. So we're going to heat this up red hot and we're also going to stretch it. And when I stretch it, what's going to happen is it's going to make this piece of metal shorter. That's why it's the longest one. you got to get it so red hot that it's going to melt it almost. That's where we're at. We're trying to get it red, red hot to the point of no return. But we don't want to put a hole in it or make it so weak that when we hit it with our hammer, it puts a hole in it. We should actually have a different, we should have a rosebud tip on here instead of a cutting torch. But I don't have a rosebud tip anymore. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take my ball tube hammer. kind of manipulate my way. And once again, this is not going to be just like the other side. So I can see that this is going to work right here. You see what I'm talking about, Vinny? Let me have that. I want to fill this corner in right here with metal. Let's see where we're at right here. So I'm going to heat this corner up and you can see it getting hot in the camera, hopefully. Um, I got to get that hot enough where I can push that into that corner and really do the job that I need. You want to hold that for a minute, please? Okay, so I'm going to take this hammer here. Ow! Watch out. And I'm trying to close that gap up right here. So once I get it, where I can screw, I'm going to screw it onto here. Go ahead and turn that off, all three knobs. Let me get this screwed on here. Then once we get that screwed on, then we'll be able to me me uh, get this going. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to close this gap up here, which is going to be a little tricky, but uh, we're going to get it. So, so I'm going to take my pliers and hold that together, and then I'm going to go ahead and screw it. On. keeping all this metal we're actually going to cut it off to where the rocker panel is but we need to get this where we need it to be so we can close all these holes up like I said it's not going to look exactly like what it's supposed to but it'll work and when you're restoring these oddball cars like this like many said it's the fender well there's going to be a tire in there nobody's going to know but uh, you still, well, you still want to try to get it the best you can, well, yeah. and do what you got to do to make it work right. I mean, even right here, it looks like it's pretty sad. Uh, we got to bend it up and bend it out, so we got to make like a stair step in it, and that's going to be kind of hard to do because we can't bend the piece up here. This piece has got to stay right where it's at. You want to give me my hammers, please? Or I got my hammers. Never mind. Yeah. And that's basically what we're trying to do. What I'm doing right here. See how that's working, Minnie? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we kind of manipulated our way into making it where it'll be usable, but what I've done is I have heated it up too much, so what I'll have to do is weld this piece on there, or actually make a new one. Because if you notice, there's a hole right here, look, Minnie. Or what I could do is heat this thing up and pound that down to meet that, which that's probably what I'm going to do. Okay, um, so we've molded this back piece, and we're not going to look at that right now. And then we also have another little section right here underneath this piece. And what I got to do, uh, I just got done basically tracing all this piece out 
and then uh, fitting it in place. And what I got to do now is I'm going to go ahead and weld this piece on. I'm going to go ahead and weld that on there because we know this is the contour. And if you look right here, you can see what I'm talking about when I said that I uh, made all these pieces longer. And the reason I did that is because I didn't know where I was going to cut it or what. Now underneath the rocker panel, let's go ahead and take that off. And I'm going to show you. Uh, remember that box piece that I made right there? Let me show you what's going on. And then if you look right there, this is that box piece that I made, that square plate. And what I did when I had the rocker panel all installed, how it's going to be on the car, I went ahead and scribed that piece with my scriber. Remember I told you to use a scribe tool? And if you look real close right here, you can see the scribe mark I made. And then that would give me the bottom of my rocker panel that's going to go ahead and ride all the way down the car. So by putting this piece on here, this is already welded. This piece is literally welded to the car. I went ahead and installed that. And this is the piece, if you look right here, the one that we heated up and made that indention to kind of mimic the indention over here on this rocker panel area slash, yeah, you get the message. So where I'm at now, now that this piece is lined up, and then you can see where I cut this piece following the original opening, all right, and you can see where I got, now what it's doing, it's giving us a line right here where I can go ahead and actually make all this work and hopefully get everything in line. Now, one thing I do want to show you is um, this is where our rocker panel is. And when I cut this piece right here, let me get up there. I accidentally went a little too high. This should have been down here, right here. So I'm going to add another piece into that before I go ahead and cut it. Now, before we go any further, I want to let everybody know I am not uh, putting all this metal on here and not protecting it. So, um, what I'm using, it's a rust inhibitor uh, spray-on type of primer that is basically kind of a semi-like pore 15 when you spray it on. It uh, doesn't just seal it, but it penetrates and has an etching to it where it will hold and hopefully it will last forever. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and get this back in place. And this is a good thing about using tech screws. If you use a tech screw and you get it in the proper place that you want it, you can always use that tool for uh, that screw for lining it back up so you never lose the alignment of your panel after you make it. And this is where I'm using my screw holes to line it all up. As you can see right here, and it's not the easiest job when you are using a camera behind your shoulder and trying to let everybody see what's going on. I'm telling you right now, doing this kind of work is a real freaking nightmare. All right, there you go. We got our panel back installed and it looks like it's gonna work, okay? The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut, I want to drill a couple holes in this thing here. I'm going to show you why. And I want to go ahead and spot weld that. And since we can see that, I'm going to go ahead and spot weld it and try to mimic the area where it's at, even though you'll never see it. So you kind of see what the situation is when you're doing this, and it is no fun at all. All right. 
right, I'm going to go ahead and get this welded on here. I'm going to go ahead and put some little tack welds on it. And then I'll weld this thing in. Once that's done, we're going to come back, get this uh, where we need it to be, cut our line where it needs to be at. And then I think we're going to have this thing on the halfway mark where all we got to do is flip the car over, weld the bottom inside it up, and we're done. It's a fucking joke. It's a real joke that somebody would take this car to the extreme of saying, this is the car I want. The guy actually came over today and he said, oh, I guess I'll have bragging rights on the car. I'll be the only one that actually restored a, a diabolical mess to this extreme on a car of this kind, size, and shape. And I said, yeah, you're right. I would have rather restore one of them old 1960 jobs you have in the back than this pile of shit. Okay, uh, I thought you said Minnie was in there, Rod. Yeah, she's in the, uh, in the house sewing a button on a pair of shorts. Okay, I think she answered the phone. What's going on today, buddy? I'm having to start regressing Chinese. Uh, let me ask you a question, Rod. Sure. Do you see the mess I got going here? Okay, look at this diabolical pile of shit look, that right. I am restoring. Oh, right. Do you know what goes right here? Do you know the name of the piece that goes in here? This is called a rocker, rocker panel. panel yeah. Okay, this is a unibody car, Rod. Right? Yeah. It's a 1976 Mercedes Benz. Uh, First off, why the hell does not a Mercedes Benz have a complete chassis underneath it? The kind of money you spend for a car like that, you'd think it would. Yeah, exactly. Look what's going on here. I've been working on this for three days. First time I ever This little section here, Dave. Yeah. See this section? I had to replace this piece here, this piece here, this piece, and I still got another piece here just to fix the rust in this area right here, Dave. The whole section is all rusted down underneath. I'm telling you, dude. And, and if it had, a, man, if it had a chassis or something, it had some money, you know, some value as far as the way it's built. Yeah. Look at here. I was actually working on this, and look at the rust I found here. But, uh, you know, you look, know. here's some rust, Rod. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's some more rust. Oh, come on over here. Let's look. Wow, look at that. Look at the damn Look at that. Look at the tire holder down. Yeah, look at the tire holder. I got to replace all that. That's that look at that. Front end so yo, I'm asking you again, would you just go buy a car like this or would you restore it to this magnitude? Be honest. I would damn sure wouldn't restore it. Thank you, Rod. Have a nice day. Oh, man. I appreciate your opinion. Uh -huh. Your opinion always counts over here at SWRC. Now, here's the old Mercedes have a chassis. Yeah, the nice classic junkyard ones he's got. Those are great. Yeah. We got to go, Rod. We got to go, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now that we got all that welded in, if you look at that big opening right there, we got to make that panel. Remember that panel was rotted, just completely rotted out. So I'm going to show you kind of an ingenious way to make with this panel. But the problem is you got to have an other panel to actually make it. And we actually have the, um, we got the right side inner fender. So I'm going to show you how we can make this thing because it's not just like the right hand fender, but it's a mirror image. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this poster board that you're looking at right here. I'm going to go ahead and cut a section off of that long enough that I know what I'm doing. We don't want the whole thing. And then this is actually the right hand side uh, inner fender. And if you look right here, this is the section we need, but we can't trace this out and then put it in there. But what we can do is we can trace it from the back side. If I kind of go like that. And then what I want to do is I am going to take my cardboard like this and then I'm going to put it around here and let me go ahead and wrap this like that. So then what we'll do is we'll kind of like take our hand just like this, see, and we're going to go ahead and push down on it, all right, and I'm going to show you here, hang on a second, that's, there we go, okay, so I'm going to push down on it like this, and it's kind of tricky to show you when I'm working off my toolbox, but I think we'll be able to do this, okay, so it's going to go up to about right here, so we're going to take our magic marker, and then we will go like this. Where are we at? Okay, here's that. 
So we got to go up to here is where we got to go. And this isn't really a perfect replica. This is just to start here, just to let everybody know. And then we're going to bring it across here like that. And then that's basically the piece that we got to cut out right here. And then if you look at that line right there that I just drew, that's the piece that has to be bent over. So we got to make it right here, right here, here, and there. And then we'll be able to bend it. But this is the trick. If I bend it exactly the same way that I just traced it, then this will be for the right hand side. But if I flip it over after I cut it out, and then I bend it the other way, then it'll be for the left side. Well, uh, our little plan of actually making a piece with our fender part down there didn't actually work out. And the reason it didn't work out is because the contour of this fender well isn't just bent, like curved like this. It's also curved like this. So it's got three or four different contours in it. So what I ended up doing, and I know it looks like crap right now, and you're going to probably say that it does. Let me get this light on. There we go. Um, I actually had to use three different pieces and kind of mold it in there to make it work. Yes, it does look like shit. It does look like shit. I'm not going to sit here and say that it is an uh, awesome job. But is it finished yet? Is it fucking finished yet? That's what I'm asking you! Sometimes you can't judge a book by the cover until actually the whole book has been read to the end where it says THE END. So let's not go ahead and criticize yet. Let's wait and see what happens when the job is all finished. And then you can bitch and complain and say he doesn't know what he's doing when I actually do know what I'm doing. Because in a situation like this, in a situation like this, when all you have is is welding tables and and you can see my shadow behind me because I'm using lights and now I'm going like that so you can see my finger in the shadow yeah okay so when you're at home or possibly doing a DIY project and oh here's a panel that I made right here to try to fit it in there and, get work. and then here's another piece of another panel that I hammer and doll it in it and then yeah you can see all the metal panels that we made and here's the original one that uh, we took out of there and you know we can't uh, uh, manipulate that to work anymore because it's all rotted and looks like shit and then you're trying to do all this shit by hand and you're working on a car that is full of rust and rot and you, you, t you buy parts cars that you want to keep instead of use to restore this is what happens and you just got to do the best job you can do until you get done down to the end and you say there you go bitch did I show you this did I even show you this piece um, you know it's got the curve here you can see that and then we kind of rolled that over but it doesn't have the curve going this way do you understand what I'm saying because without that curve that's going this way it's not going to work. It's, it's fucking junk. So yesterday afternoon, um, I, uh, and it was late afternoon, I might say, because this is a big job here. All right, I've actually been working on this one corner right here. I've been working on this one corner for, um, this is going on day four. Now, the first two days I worked on it, I didn't work on it a full eight hours, okay? But yesterday I did work on it for approximately six and a half hours. I did have to take a break because this is very frustrating. This type of job is not for the weak at heart, you might say. Because this is the kind of job that will drive you batty and, and basically insane. Um, and the reason I say that is because it's very uh, mind-boggling of how you're doing this. This is a job that you don't even really think about it when you start it. You just jump into it and then you just figure it out as you're going type job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my torch and I'm going to heat this piece of metal up inside here and as I heat it up I will take my channel lock vice grips, you can see those, and I am going to forcibly and movably get this molded in there 
so we can make it work. Now, I went ahead and used three pieces of metal because I had to make it like this, follow that contour line, and I couldn't do it with one piece, so I cut it in three sections, and then what I'll do, and then I welded them together so we know this contour is right. Now we got to get all this to where it actually fits in there and molds in so we can actually have this lip that will seal all this up properly and water won't go behind it and basically rot and rust it out like all the shit that I just fixed. somewhere on this let me get that molded in there and um, see where we're going to lead uh, to the finish line and hopefully there will be a finish somewhere down the line the finish line this is not the finish line this is just the beginning we haven't really even started the race yet we haven't even started the race all we did is open our box of cereal up and and pour it in the bowl and uh, the milk that we took out of the refrigerator is rotted. Yeah, it's rotted and we don't even have milk to pour on our cereal here. So let me get to work here. We gotta get this thing going and hopefully it's gonna all work out, hopefully.